Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome here to the Launchpad, and welcome to our live launch coverage of Viasat 3 Americas, launching from Launch Complex 39A at NASA Kennedy Space Center here in Florida. If it's your first time here, though, welcome here at TLP. It's our mission to inform and inspire the explorers of tomorrow, because we believe that space is better together, and we're glad to have you joining us here at live tonight. You're not seeing me on screen like normal tonight, because we are in the middle of setting up our Florida TLP HQ uh, studio. We're hoping to have that online by the end of the week and excited to show that off to our members first and then see, have you guys joining us uh, beginning hopefully next week live from our new studio here in Florida with our new team on site bring you the best coverage we can of everything from around the world, but specifically here on the Space Coast. We are at T-minus 13 minutes, 6 seconds and counting, and everything is proceeding well for today's launch attempt. We're keeping an eye on the weather. All the weather is looking good, except for the ground winds. It's something they've been monitoring throughout the day, and we're expecting to have an update from SpaceX here shortly. As you can see, their intro is beginning. If it's your first time here, though, definitely take a moment, check out our TLP mission briefing. That's where you can learn more about today's rocket, company, and payload. We issue our detailed mission briefings for every launch, even ones we don't live stream, so definitely check that out. And if you want to help us build this website, bringing these detailed mission briefings and building a database of all of human exploration so we have a factual source for everyone, consider joining our team. Applications are now open to be a volunteer on our TLP data research team, and we'd love to have you joining us here. SpaceX is going to get started here, so let's listen in to an update as we continue to count down to launch. Launch Complex 39A. to lift off just a few minutes from now. Today we have three payloads on the mission. Those are Viasat 3 as the primary payload for our customer Viasat. Viasat 3 is expected to be the world's highest capacity satellite and will be the largest all electric satellite ever to be launched. In addition to Viasat 3, we also have two secondary payloads on board the second stage. Those two payloads are Astronus's Microgeo satellite and Gravity's CubeSat Gravity Space 1. Both are scheduled to deploy after Viasat, which will be a few hours after liftoff. And as we mentioned during our last attempt, for this mission, we do need a lot of extra performance to help deliver these satellites to their final destination in a geostationary orbit high above the surface of the Earth. In order to do this, we will not be recovering the side boosters or the center core, and instead each will burn the fuel that we typically use for landing. Now, because we're not recovering the boosters or sec center core, there's no need for landing legs, which you'll notice on the bottom of your screen there have been removed. We've also removed the grid fins, and this is just to save a little bit of mass for some extra performance on the vehicle. Our Merlin vacuum engine today will light three times during this mission. The last burn will take place around the T plus four hour and 20 minute mark into flight. Deployments will wrap up about 25 minutes after the final burn, and that makes our mission duration for today just under five hours. At T minus 10 minutes and 48 seconds, systems are currently a go for an on-time liftoff. The vehicle is nearly fully loaded with propellants, the range is green and ready to support. Now, if for some reason we do not launch today, we do have a backup opportunity tomorrow at the same time. Now at T minus 10 minutes and 30 seconds and counting, let's take a closer look at the Falcon Heavy vehicle. Hey everyone, I am Jesse Anderson, a production engineering manager here at SpaceX. Falcon Heavy is a two-stage vehicle, just like Falcon 9, but the first stage of Falcon Heavy uses three boosters, whereas Falcon 9 only has one. You can think of Falcon Heavy as essentially three Falcon 9 rockets strapped together, which means that it can carry much larger payloads. Each side booster has flown before, one booster having flown twice and the other seven times before. The center core is new, but as Atticus mentioned, we won't be attempting to recover our side boosters or center core on today's mission. 
Falcon Heavy has 28 engines total. Each one of Falcon Heavy's boosters has nine Merlin 1D engines, making for a total of 27 engines across all three boosters. And you can see that incredible view on your screen. At full power, these 27 engines produce the same thrust as 18 747 airplanes at takeoff. The 27th engine is a Merlin vacuum engine on the second stage and will power the payload to its final targeted orbit. Once we once the first and second stage separate, the second stage will propel our payload to its intended orbit. You'll notice some gray paint on the second stage today, and that's just to help absorb some of the heat from the sun to keep our fuel warm during the long flight today. And above the second stage is where our payloads are safely enclosed inside of the fairing, and that's what you're seeing there on your screen. The fairing protects the payload from aerothermal loads, heating, and contamination during ascent. Once we reach the vacuum of space, we no longer need this protection, so we will jettison the fairing as the second stage continues on its journey to orbit. We will be attempting to recover the fairing halves today with our recovery vessel named Doug. And speaking of fairings, today's launch marks the 100th flight of a reflown payload fairing. The Viasat 3 America's mission also marks the very first Falcon Heavy to launch with flight proven fairing halves. Viasat 3 is the first of three satellites to make up a new global constellation. So here's more about today's mission and payload. And if you're just joining us, welcome here to the launch pad. We are at T minus eight minutes, 10 seconds and counting until the third launch attempt of SpaceX's Falcon Heavy rocket carrying Viasat 3 from historic launch complex. 39A at NASA Kennedy Space Center. If it's your first time here, make sure you engage that subscribe button and share out the stream so you never miss another live launch coverage, docking, undocking, or return to Earth, and invite people to join us here. This is only the sixth ever Falcon Heavy flight to take place. We're excited to see it and uh, super excited to be here uh, in person just across the river from Falcon Heavy tonight. My first Falcon Heavy launch, so we're excited to uh, get that in the books. Propellant loading well underway, starting to top off uh, in many of the stages as we get now just 7 minutes, 27 seconds and counting until flight. Next major event coming up is going to be engine chill and then the strong back retract. We of course are waiting to hear updates on the weather, but it looks to be an absolutely gorgeous night here uh, on the space coast. A clear sky and a beautiful sunset, so hopefully we'll see some incredible jellyfish effect from Falcon Heavy this evening. If you are anywhere along the space coast and end up taking photos or videos, make sure you tag us on all of our social medias on Twitter, TLPN underscore official, or on Instagram or Facebook at the Launchpad Network. We'd love to see those, and with our new studio, we're going to be excited to start bringing on some of your guys' photos and videos during our show, follow Following live launches so we can show what you guys saw as we uh, really enjoy this new rapid cadence of launches from the Space Coast. That one guy, thank you so much for those gifted memberships. I saw some others come in before we got started, so to those that donated, thank you so much. All that goes back into us being able to upgrade our equipment and launch this new on-location studio here in Florida, getting more equipment to have our team. We got a number of our team down at the NASA Kennedy Space Center press site tonight. I was bit easy working in the studio, so wasn't able to join them this evening. But we do have a number of our photographers and videographers down on site, so make sure you follow us on our social medias for some photos, and as well as checking out our shop, as we now, with almost every launch, add new posters and metal prints to our shop, so definitely stay tuned for those. Now coming down just under six minutes and counting until launch, Engine Chill is well underway. If you guys have questions, you can send those in the chat by tagging me at the launch pad, and we'll work on answering those live here today. A little bit different than what we normally see with Falcon. No recovery of any Falcons today. Fully expendable. We were out at the pad at LC-39A a couple of days ago, and it was quite the sight to see no landing legs and no grid fins on two flight-proven boosters serving as the side cores for the three-core Falcon Heavy rocket. The center stage is new, along with the second stage as always, but they are attempting to recover the fairings, I believe they said with their drone ship, Doug. Now coming down, T-minus 5 minutes, 15 seconds and counting. The next major milestone we're looking for is strong back retract. We'll be waiting for those here shortly. Falcon Heavy tanks are pressurizing for strong back retract. They're pressurizing all the tanks of Falcon Heavy for that strong back retract. A really good sign, T-minus 5 minutes and counting. 
We'll listen back into uh, SpaceX here once they complete this video from Viasat. But Viasat is a customer for SpaceX. SpaceX is launching the Viasat 3 satellite. It's not a competitor to Starlink. It does different type of operations and is a much larger uh, satellite vehicle. And we should have strong back retract now underway. T minus four minutes, 24 seconds and counting. Next milestone, Falcon Heavy going into startup. Let's listen back in to SpaceX Mission Control. Mission for retraction. The clamp arms around the second stage will open, and then that truss structure next to, next to the vehicle known as the strong back will start to retract away from the Falcon Heavy. You can see those clamp arms starting to open up underneath of the fairing on the second stage there. After this, the strong back will retract away from the vehicle, and this is to clear the way for ascent. Strong back is used to provide structural support as well as routing for fluids. NY booster lock load complete. As well as routing for fluids and power to the vehicle. PY booster lock load complete. We just heard locks loading finished up on the PY booster. Next up at around T minus two minutes, locks loading will complete on the second stage. After locks loading finishes loading onto the second stage, the entire vehicle will be completely full with 2.8 million pounds of propellant. Center core locks load is complete. Just hearing the various boosters finish up their locks loading. Looks like quite a nice day down there in Cape Canaveral. Weather is much more cooperative for this attempt today. T minus two minutes, 30 seconds and counting. Let's see that go, no go in the chat as we always do here on the launch pad. And let's listen into SpaceX mission control as we go through the final count. Mind me, I'm gonna step away. This is my first Falcon Heavy on site and I will be back with you during the coast phase, but go Viasat 3 and go Falcon, Falcon Heavy. Load Box loading on the second stage which will wrap up the propellant loading phase of our countdown. Second stage, locks load is complete. And there it is. Falcon Heavy is now fully loaded with 2.8 million pounds of propellant. Coming up next, we should see some white clouds venting from the TE locks line. This is completely normal and part of our closeout process. Following this, the vehicle will enter startup at T minus one minute. This is when the onboard flight computers take control of the countdown. And shortly after the vehicle enters the startup phase, our Grand LD, our LD or launch director should give the final go for launch. Let's listen in for those call-outs. Falcon Heavy is in startup. There we go. Falcon Heavy has just entered the startup phase. Go for launch. And with confirmation of go for launch from our launch director, Falcon Heavy is ready to go to space at T minus 37 seconds with the Viasat 3 mission. Engines full power. 
and liftoff of Viasat 3. Go Viasat, go Falcon Heavy. Vehicle is pitching downrange. M1D chamber pressure is novel. We are 30 seconds into flight under the power of 5 million pounds of thrust. Falcon Heavy is headed to space. Now we are throttling down our engines on those side boosters and that's in preparation for max Q. Power into telemetry nominal. Max Q is the moment of peak mechanical stress. Falcon Heavy is supersonic. Peak mechanical stress on the vehicle. So we do slow down the vehicle to get through this period of high stress. And once we pass through Max-Q, we will throttle those engines back up on those side boosters. Max-Q. And great call out, we have passed through Max-Q. So we're going to throttle up those engines again on these side boosters. You can follow along the telemetry on your left hand, on the bottom left hand of your screen. You can see the speed and the altitude of the vehicle and some incredible views of Falcon Heavy in flight. Now, two minutes into flight, we will reduce the thrust on the two side boosters again, and that will be to decrease the forces on the vehicle structure. And that's because the vehicle is now lighter as we're burning through the fuel on the vehicle, uh, but the thrust will remain constant. And wow, that looks amazing on the screen, all three boosters burning bright there. Falcon Heavy is following a nominal trajectory. And good call out on trajectory. Now again, we're gonna throttle down the side boosters and then the next event coming up in about a minute or just under a minute will be BECO, that's booster engine cutoff. That's where we will shut down the engines on the side boosters and then we will separate the side boosters from the center core. And as a reminder, we are not landing our side boosters or center core today due to performance needed on today's mission. And you can see on your right hand screen, we do have a view of the separation mechanisms from the center core to the side boosters. And BECO, or booster engine cutoff, is coming up here in a few seconds. MVAC engine chill has started. Booster engine cutoff. Side booster separation confirmed. Both side boosters, FTS is saved. Great views there. We had Beco booster engine cutoff, and we watched as those side boosters, and you could see them there on your screen, those side boosters falling Vehicle away. Is following a nominal trajectory. Falling away from Falcon Heavy's center core. Awesome views. That's going to wrap it up for the side boosters today. The next event coming up here in about 30 seconds or so is main engine cutoff. That is also called MECO, and that will be on the center core, followed by stage separation and then the startup of our second stage engine. Yeah. Main engine cut off. Stage separation confirmed. Stage one FTS has saved. MVAC ignition. Acquisition signal, Bermuda. And we got some great views. We watched Miko as the engines on the center core shut down, stage separation, and now you can see on your screen that the MVAC engine has ignited. Now we are coming up on fairing separation. Separation confirmed.
And also we're able to see and hear the call out that- H2 is following a nominal trajectory. That the fairing halves have separated. They are now falling back down to earth and we will attempt to recover them using our recovery vessel, Doug. And what you're looking at on your screen is a view on our second stage, looking aft at our MVAC engine. And our MVAC engine on the second stage is currently in the middle of its first burn. This burn has about a minute and a half left. After that, we'll have an additional two burns of our second stage engine before payload deployment. On your left-hand screen, you could see a map of the mission trajectory. On your right-hand screen is a live view of the MVAC engine. As a reminder, our main payload for today's... Page two continues to follow a nominal trajectory. Good callouts. Our main payload for today's mission is Viasat 3, and we do have two secondary payloads on board as well from Gravity and Astronus. That is the Gravity Space One and Astronus's MicroGeo satellite. If you're just now joining us, we're currently in the middle of the first of three burns for this MVAC engine today. The next event coming up is in just under a minute and 15 seconds. We will have Seco One, or what we call Second Engine Cutoff One, and that will end the first of those three burns. Today's mission marks SpaceX's 28th launch this year, 227th overall mission to date, and our fifth operational Falcon Heavy mission. Stage two, FTS has saved. Now on your right-hand screen, you can see the MVAC engine. Stage two has entered terminal guidance. And we're getting good, good call-outs there. On the bottom right-hand of your screen, you can see the speed of the second stage as well as the altitude. And we are about 20 seconds or so from Seco one That's where we will shut down this MVAC engine and allow the vehicle to coast with the payloads on board. Expected loss of signal, Cape. And you could see that MVAC engine beginning to shut down we did hear a call out for expected loss of signal. Nominal parking orbit. And we got confirmation of good orbit. So with confirmation of second engine cutoff and a good orbit, we'll be heading into a coast phase until our second relight of our MVAC engine around the T plus 30 minute mark. We'll come back to bring you live coverage of that second burn in about 20 minutes. So until then, sit back and enjoy the Space Tunes. And if it was your first time here, welcome here to the launch pad here at TLP. It's our mission to inform and inspire the explorers of tomorrow because we believe that space is better together. And we're so glad to have you here with us for live launch coverage of the fifth operational Falcon Heavy flight. The second stage has completed its first burn. We are now in a coast phase waiting for that second burn. We're going to be taking some time to answer your guys' comments and questions. So you can send those in the chat by taking us at the launch pad and we'll work on answering those live for you. Opus, really good question. How many launches in person does that make for you now? Well, do we count Starship as a launch or a flight test? <coughs> um, that would be, I've seen three Fal three? One, four Falcon 9s. This was my first Falcon Heavy. I've seen one, the Artemis 1 SLS and Starship. So, math. Seven? 
I think I'm at now. Excited to get into those double digits here in the near future. Just got sent some pictures from my friend uh, Charlie, who is over in uh, Tampa. They had a great view of the launch tonight. Uh, t Charlie joined us on site for the Falcon 9 launch a couple days ago where we were hoping for a double header. Uh, but awesome. If you guys see, have taken photos or videos of today's launch, we're excited to start introducing that later in the week. Uh, make sure you're tagging us. Post those right away. Tag us at TLPN on uh, official on Twitter or at the Launchpad Network on Instagram and Facebook. We're going to work on trying to incorporate those into the stream to uh, see what your guys' view of the launch was. But we're glad to have you all here with us. Uh, Huberto, why not cover the Launchpad columns with heat tiles? Uh, they don't need to. The way they get re they re-enter, they re-enter vertically, uh, so they don't need to have heat tiles like Starship does. Yeah, and if you guys have questions, you can send those. You can send those in the chat by tagging us at the launch pad. Ricky saying, "How's the pad repair at Starship going?" Uh, good. Elon had an update with the media yesterday on a Twitter space. He's saying six to eight weeks for the pad to be back ready. Um, I'd say give that a few more weeks, but we'll wait and see what happens. From what we've heard, the pad and the tower are actually in really good condition. <coughs> Excuse me, starship dust. Um, but uh, the ground is the part that got really destroyed uh, more so. So uh, definitely um, going to take some time for them to fix that up before another launch attempt. But we will, of course, be back at Starbase for the next launch attempt. Blake, the Falcon Heavy was originally meant to not expend all three boosters. So Falcon Heavy has the option of expending all three, expending just the center core, or expending, there is the possibility of expending none, uh, but we haven't seen that yet. We normally see them recover um, two of the core stage. Uh, we'll give a shout out there. Thanks so much for that new order. Appreciate you sending that in. If you guys want to check out the shop, make sure you use your uh, promo code launch day. You get 10% off of everything, and it pops up on the start, the uh, screen there now during our launches. So thank you so much for supporting TLP in that way. But Blake, absolutely. Uh, it is something that uh, they, not always will Falcon Heavy be fully expendable. It depends what the customer needs. Biosat 3 is a very large, very heavy satellite with a couple small satellites on board, so they would not have enough propellant to be able to bring those boosters back, even for a safe landing downrange on the drone ships. Well, thanks for sending that in. Good question. Uh, the first stage will splash down into the ocean in the designa in two designated uh, areas. Uh, Ginger's asking about stage separation on Starship. They're investigating a lot of that, and we'll hopefully know no more in the uh, next couple of weeks. Uh, Mark, didn't the FAA suspend the Starship launch until a full investigation? Yes. So uh, there is an FAA launch investigation underway into the failure of the first integrated flight test of Starship. Uh, but uh, it is something that SpaceX is already well conducting. They know a lot of what already went wrong. We did put out an article. Uh, I'll get one of our team to grab the link for it. Actually, it's right there already in the chat. Um, gives you some more information on what happened during the inter integrated flight test and the timeline of events of what happened. So SpaceX already knows what really went wrong with the ship and the booster and the engines. Um, so they're already giving that info to the FAA. Now there's uh, environmental stuff being reviewed, uh, debris and dust <coughs> excuse me that are being um uh, investigated and reviewed uh don't normally like being on stream sick but was from covering starship so uh we're uh, we're fighting through it and we're glad to be able to be live with you all uh tonight and see this beautiful falcon heavy launch from pad 39a blake how many people are in your crew well, here in florida Ooh, we just grew the crew a bunch i'm not sure i actually have a an I want to say we're at, nah, at 10 people, 10, 11 on the Space Coast. Um, and then we've got a team across, uh, got a couple people. Uh, we got one or two in Canada. We've got a few across the United States. Uh, and we've got a couple in the UK. Uh, we've got um, one spread around. We've got Ireland, Scotland, England, 
uh, and uh, Wales. We've had all over there, uh, but we are excited to be growing our team. And if you're interested in joining that, uh, the link is in the description, or you can head to our website and click the About section, join our team. We are really looking to bring on a bunch of uh, writers for our TLP News section, uh, where we write on the latest space news. Excited to have you volunteers join that, as well as our TLP data team. We are working on building the world's first fully complete human exploration uh, space exploration database uh, that will be available to the public worldwide, not just the United States, but global human space exploration. And we're working on building that. So if you're interested in joining that team or as a moderator or part of our social media team, definitely check that out. Send in an application. Uh, and if we have an open position uh, that we think you'd fit, we'll reach out uh, and welcome some people on the team. But we'd love to have you all with us here. Uh, James, volunteers. At this time, it is volunteer, but we are looking at op uh, opening up some um, possible internships as well as uh, contracted positions, uh, hopefully by the end of the year. So we are looking into some options for that uh, as well. Uh, and then especially for things like Artemis 2 and that stuff, uh, we bring on as many people as we can. Uh, so we work on, you know, it's not always necessarily a paid position, but making sure we have everyone here in Florida for that launch, you know, Hotels, food, all that costs quite a bit, and we make sure we try to take care of our team because ultimately space is better together. Uh, Ricky, did you get sick from being covered in all the dust and debris from Starship? Um, I do not have a letter from a doctor that says directly that my respiratory infection is from Starship, but it is the only link that makes sense. Um, and I, I put that public information out there myself. That's my decision to say that. Um, but I, I was diagnosed with a respiratory infection just a few days following Starship, uh, and we did get covered in that dust. So um, we, we did, there, there's no way to directly link it, unfortunately. Um, you know, it's not like a virus that you can track, um, but it is something uh, that uh, we're fighting through, and it's okay. We're doing okay. We're feeling better. Uh, but uh, we're excited to be here and be here on the Space Coast, setting up our TLP Florida studio. This is a dream of mine since a kid. Uh, and uh, only able to do that thanks to your guys' generous support. Blake, what is the minimum age someone can be to join the crew? So um, a lot of positions, you do need to be 18, um, just due to restrictions of being able to um, be on base, on facility, press calls, things like that. But there are positions that can be considered um, for 16 and up. Um, but we do encourage people, you know, if you're interested, send in an application maybe there's opportunities we can see um what's possible but anything under 18 uh and especially under 16 there has to be obviously conversations with parents and guardians and stuff uh for that as well so generally 18 but we do have a few on our team that are 16 and up um that uh, have specific roles that they're able to complete um while they uh until they become age of 18. and those rules aren't our rules for like on base and stuff those are rules with nasa and spacex um, so following those to the best of our ability. Uh, Mark's asking, any news on the Virgin Space Program, Spaceport America? They did just do a glide test. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. Um, of their, uh, their, their space plane vehicle. Uh, that was earlier, uh, late last week um, that they did that test. Uh, so they are working towards doing another test flight here and hopefully getting back underway in the near future. But we'll be uh, keeping a close eye on that and uh, hopefully seeing that uh, take place here uh, in the very near future. If you're just joining us, though, and have questions, you can send those in the chat by taking us at the launch pad. We're currently in a coast phase. Now, today's going to be a long coast phase until deployment. We have deployment not scheduled until 4 hours 32 minutes uh, into flight here today. So what we're going to do is we're going to stay live through that second stage, second burn, SES-2. That's going to be in just about 10 minutes from now. It's a two-minute burn that'll occur. And then we're going to wrap up our live commentary feed because then there is nothing for four hours. Um, and it'll be late into the evening for all of us here, and we're busy working on setting up the studio. But we'll, of course, confirm payload deployments through our social media. But we're going to take some time, answer some more of your questions. We, can't, we know the last few weeks have been a little bumpy with our coverage of launches, but we're busy setting up the studio, working on our mobile operations units, 
uh, and we're only able to do that thanks to your guys' generous support. We were able to upgrade a bunch of equipment, uh, and uh, we're excited to start bringing live streams from the press site here at NASA Kennedy Space Center, uh, as well as other places. We've also got a trip to Europe in the works for some tours, uh, and all that is thanks to you guys being here and part of TLP. So uh, make sure if you're new, subscribe so you don't miss any of that. Consider becoming a member. I do have some videos that I'm going to be posting in the next couple of days once they're edited from behind the scenes at our Starship flight test. Um, some reaction videos and things like that, so stay tuned for that. <coughs> Hope was to get those out a little bit faster, but with the respiratory infection uh, and traveling back to Florida and getting set up, I had a little bit of a delay there. Mitchell, do you think we'll ever see rockets get replaced with another form of space launch? Ooh, that's a really cool question, Mitchell, and I think that's a question we should save for our new podcast that we're going to be starting up here in the next little bit. Uh, that would be a really interesting podcast question. Um, but uh, I don't think we will see necessarily a change from getting off of Earth. But I think we could see some really interesting modes of transportation in space develop for low Earth orbit to the moon and to Mars. I've always said I'm really curious to see once we start being able to do on-orbit construction, you know, who's going to be the first company that builds, you know, the first space cruise ship? type of thing because ultimately if you're willing to do a long duration mission to mars or even the moon um you could launch you know five or ten starships with people to a much larger vessel in low earth orbit um and take a, a journey a normal length or a longer length journey but you need way less power to be able to do so because you've already uh, got that vehicle in orbit you obviously still need the delta v to make the transition windows um, and control the ship, but you don't need all that power and fuel tanks to get into orbit. Like, look at Starship. We don't need super heavy once we're in orbit, and a Starship is basically empty once we're in orbit, and we have to refill it. So if you can imagine getting rid of all of that and just having a little bit of fuel on Starship, Starship would be half the size, and you could have almost this little hopper vehicle. I mean, it's still quite large, but this much smaller version that bounces around low Earth orbit as like a little cruise vehicle. Um, so I think we'll see some stuff innovate in that that could be really, really interesting. Aerodynamics, thank you so much for that super chat. $1.99 saying hello. Appreciate that. That goes right back into uh, advancing our equipment, and we really do appreciate it. Les, uh, thank you, Launchpad, for providing great coverage of these events. Well, thanks so much. Appreciate you being here. Catching up on the chat. Again, if you guys have questions, or got a few more minutes till second stage, uh, second burn. Uh, so you can send those in the chat by tagging us at the launch pad. Also, if you want to consider the conversation, can continue the conversation. You can join us over on the TLP Discord. It's free to join. That's where our community hangs out in between all of our streams. Uh, and love to uh, have you uh, join us in there. Once we get the TLP studio set up, we are going to be uh, bringing back some of our community hangouts and game nights and stuff. Uh, so excited to uh, have you uh, hopefully join us for that. Uh, seeing some photos coming in on the Discord of Falcon Heavy Launch. Awesome to see uh, those. Make sure if you're posting them on social media, uh, make sure you drop a link in the Discord. It's a really great way for us to see them. Or make sure you're tagging us at TLPN underscore official on Twitter or at the Launchpad Network on Facebook or Instagram. If you're not following us on those platforms as well, make sure you give us a follow there. We are going to be launching our Instagram here. I've been doing some testing with it and excited to hopefully see you guys there. And make sure you stay tuned for some new posters coming to the shop in the next couple of days. Blake, what is your favorite rocket you have watched? Mm. Inspiration 4 is going to be a really hard one to beat uh, for me. That was a Falcon 9 with Crew Dragon Resilience. That's going to be a really hard one for me to beat for a couple of reasons. Um, one, it was my first flight, the uh, first launch that I ever got to see. I got to watch it from the Banana Creek viewing site. Um, I was an invited guest of the commander of that mission and had the honor of talking to had the honor of talking to Jared Isaacman a number of times. Uh, privately prior to the flight and then we had that interview uh, right after the announcement um, so it was it was quite a, a, a moment getting to finally see my first launch in person but um, having somewhat of a connection and partly knowing someone that was actually on board seeing humans leave this planet um, there's one thing seeing cargo leave but when you know there are four people 
on that vehicle and you've seen them in person, you've zoomed with them and talked with them, um, it, it's quite different uh, to see. So that was quite surreal. Um, I've had the honor of seeing a Falcon 9 two miles away, feeling the power of Falcon. Um, that was quite cool. Uh, and Artemis 1. I mean, Artemis 1 and Starship's IFT 1, uh, since we're now going to have multiple of those. Um, I think, you know, those they each have their own major um, reasons why they'd be a favorite. SLS, Artemis, that's a new era of space exploration for the Artemis program, getting ready to take man and women to, uh, men and women to the moon. That's huge. Um, Starship, that's a vehicle that hopefully one day is going to take us to Mars and beyond. Um, it's going to open up massive manufacturing opportunities in low Earth orbit, massive facilities on the moon and Mars. Um, so I, I am very honored and uh, I recognize how lucky I am to have gone to witness these flights in person. The first all-civilian mission, the first SLS, the first Starship. Um, I, uh, as a kid, the, the kid in me is giddy. This is something I dreamed of getting to just see in person, let alone it being my job. Is, uh, I, it's still, I still pinch myself waking up every morning and you look out the window and you see the VAB. Um, when that's something you've dreamed of as a kid and you're actually doing it, it's pretty cool. And I can only do that thanks to you guys' support being down here So, um, and our team being able to do this. This is a team thing. We couldn't do this with everyone from uh, Jay, who makes all the overlays and systems work. Uh, Jay is a madhouse machine that makes all of this magic on screen happen uh, to our moderators, to our executive producer coming on, who he and I have been working on tons of ideas and new stuff coming on to the shows and new shows we're going to be rolling out, to our rocket chasers who are on site getting us updates and photos and videos, um, to there's so many people on this team. Um, when we say space is better together in our mission, it's not just for that we think it's better together, but it's because we have an awesome team too. So um, yeah, thanks for sending that in. Mitchell, sort of similar question. Do you think we will eventually get to a point where we can launch CubeSats with individual small rockets? Absolutely. Um, I'm not sure. Uh, I mean, it'd be a really small rocket to do one CubeSat, but I get the idea like we could launch, like universities could launch their own rockets. Um, maybe one day we could see something like that. I think if anything, we're going to see, you know, things like Starship or, or Falcon 9 get to a point where, you know, it's daily. Um, you know, if you can fit 120, 130 CubeSats in a Falcon 9 and you could launch those every day, that'd be a huge opportunity for colleges, universities, and private customers to get their CubeSats in orbit. So, yeah. Blake Hill, do you think you will be around for quite a few more years? I hope so. I, 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 I hope this isn't the end of me. Um, no, we've, we've got huge plans for the future. We're already planning. I'm not kidding. We are already planning our Artemis 3 coverage of when we see the first man, or see the first, we see men and the first woman walk on the moon. Uh, we have already had conversations of that for well over six months. We've started sketching out designs and layouts and uh, planning out our coverage. Uh, we're going to be down here on site for months leading up to it, um, and we've got lots of stuff planned already for that. We've got plans for the uh, first mission to Mars we've already rough talked about, um, so uh, we're, uh, we're here for the long haul. We're not here for a short term, uh, and that's why we're not only on YouTube. I know we've had some people being like, oh, you're on so many things. Um, we're doing that because we don't want to be a splash in the pan. This is a new era of space exploration, and we want to be able to be your trusted source for everything space. So that's why we have the news website, YouTube, all of our social medias, our shop, uh, our Discord, um, and we have new things coming. Our app, version 2, is in works, and that's hopefully coming this summer, so stay tuned for that. Um, but uh, lots of exciting things that we uh, are uh, doing here. But uh, my hope is that this is my career. I know some of our team uh, have made that commitment as well, that uh, this is what we want to do. Uh, for the rest of our life. You can see there they were beginning engine chill on the second stage as we were coming up to uh, the second stage of burn. That's going to be just in a few seconds from now. Let's listen in. Viasat 3, America's mission. If you're just joining us, we did have an on-time liftoff at 8.26 p.m. Eastern time from Kennedy Space Center's Launch Complex 39A. Due to the performance requirements on this mission, we did not recover the side boosters or the center core, but our second stage is well on its way. Coming up next is the second of three total burns that the second stage needs to execute before payload deployment. 
Now for the, this next burn, we might lose ground station coverage, partly through the burn. So while we may not be able to confirm SECO2 or good orbit immediately after, our team on console will be able to confirm this when we acquire signal from the next ground station. Now this burn should last just about two minutes and starting any second now. Stand by for ignition, and there we have ignition of the second stage. The MVAC engine is burning, beginning its two-minute burn. This is the second burn uh, of three planned for the Viasat 3 America's mission. We'll be burning for two minutes approximately there. Uh, some absolutely incredible photos uh, already coming in from our Rocket Chasers team. Uh, we'll be posting those on our social media, so make sure you definitely check us out on Twitter as we'll be working on posting those. And some of them will be ending up on the shop uh, in uh, the next few hours and over the next day, so stay tuned for that as well. But uh, awesome to see some photos coming in there from uh, Gavin and our team. Uh, some truly, truly incredible shots uh, coming in uh, this evening. About 30,000 kilometers, and that will put us in a geostationary orbit. Now, what's special about a geostationary orbit is it takes roughly 24 hours for a satellite in this orbit to complete one full orbit around the Earth. Expected loss of signal, goodbye. Now, as I mentioned earlier, it does look like we have lost ground station coverage. So once we regain signal at the next ground station, we should hear a call out for SECO2, and that stage two is in a good orbit. Now, as far as live coverage for our third and final burn, that will occur in a couple of hours from now at the T plus four hour and 22 minute mark. I hope you all stick with us and we will see you then. And SpaceX is uh, going to continue their coverage. So we do invite you to uh, join them for that as we continue through. We're busy working, setting up the uh, TLP studio, working on some on-site systems here, uh, getting set up. So we'll have our studio up and running over the next couple of days. Uh, if you're a member, make sure you stay tuned uh, for some behind the scenes of the new studio being set up. We'll do a test stream with members as well. Uh, but if it was your first time here, welcome. My name's Zach. I'm the founder and host here at TLP. And this was our first live stream from the new TLP studio here in on the Space Coast. And we are glad to have you joining us here. 32 minutes, 8 seconds ago, Falcon Heavy launched for the sixth time on its fifth operational mission from Historic Launch Complex 39A at NASA Kennedy Space Center. If you haven't yet, take a moment, engage that, sub engage that subscribe button so you never miss another live launch coverage, docking, undocking, or return to Earth. If you want to know when your upcoming launches are, head over to tlpnetwork.com, click on Launches. That's where you can find your global launch calendar of all upcoming launches around the world, as well as some of our featured launches and their detailed mission briefings. The next launches that we have on schedule, currently we have the Rocket Like a Hurricane mission launching from uh, Rocket Lab Launch Complex 1B in New Zealand, currently pending for May 2nd. We have Starlink 5-6 launching from Slick 40 at Cape Canaveral pending on May 4th. And we have uh, a number of launches pending for the, uh, a lot of launches in May that are currently pending, including possibly seeing a flight of Firefly, the second last Delta IV Heavy, uh, and more. So make sure you're checking that out as we continue to count down on to some incredible launches happening this year. But that's going to do it for us here in our live launch coverage. We're going to be starting up some uh, more Q&A uh, style streams in the near future as well so make sure you stay tuned for those join us for uh kind of a weekly chat about everything space uh, as well as our new tlp news weekly show recapping everything in the space news of that week but lots of exciting things coming out of the tlp florida studio and we can't wait for you to see them but that's going to do it for us here tonight make sure you join us over on the discord check out the shop but for now this is zach from tlp florida hq signing off we'll see you next time Bye bye